Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. We have another inside the box RPG piece for you today, courtesy of our compadres at Noble Knight. Um, I mentioned in the previous video that I got rid of most, but not quite all, of my original RuneQuest 3rd edition material. Um, some of which I have reacquired since. Uh, one of the pieces that I have just now reacquired, thanks to Noble Knights, is this. This is uh, possibly, I mean, this is debatable, but but I think one of the best supplements produced for Glorantha up until very recent times, um, and certainly, at least in the early RuneQuest 3rd Edition product line, uh, certainly the best product for Glorantha overall. Uh, this is Gods of Glorantha. This is a product from 1985. It is box number five. So I believe that box one was Monster Coliseum. Please check out the previous video if you want to see that. Uh, boxes two and three were the character sheet boxes. Um, Box four was uh, Land of Vi uh, was Vikings, which I had back in the day, and which is actually a very good supplement on the Vikings and you know Norse adventuring. Um, and this is number five, Gods of Glorantha. I had this back in the day; it is outstanding. I you know haven't looked in it in a long time, um, and I ordered it for two reasons: one, I wanted it, and two. Um, Noble Knight had it for a very, what I thought was a very reasonable price, and this is in, I mean, we have some some pretty minor shelf wear here, but this is in great shape. I am delighted to put this on my own shelf. We do have a bit of yellowing inside the box, though, what it looks like, and a bit of musty smell, too. If you were, or I were, exceptionally sensitive to that smell, I might be bothered, but I'm not. So, there are several things in here. We have, here's what's in here. What the priests say, that is this booklet. There is a cults book, and you can see this has been sitting in the book for a long time. There's a prosopedia, uh, which lists 300 Glorantham deities. Wow, okay. Uh, and and the calendar. This is, this is the thing that when I first saw this, I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. That's neat. So this is what it sounds like. This is the glor I'm going to look at this first, actually. This is the Gloranthan calendar. Uh, this is sacred time, which is kind of when a lot of weird stuff happens. We'll turn it over this way, actually. Oh, how about that? So it actually gives you some details on how the calendar is structured. That is a detail of a setting that I am always a sucker for. And then we get, you know, it's a calendar, man, which is cool. Illustrations and everything. I'm going to try not to ruin it. Uh, we have sea season, fire season, earth season. Looks like we might have a... No, the staples look pretty clean. Looks like there's a... A little bit of oxidation on the staples, but they're not rusty or anything like that. That's when it, mustiness can become a problem, or if it was a big problem, you might get staple rust and stuff like that. I'm not really seeing that here. Dark season, storm season, and then this gives us sacred time, which is at, I forget whether it's the beginning or the end of the year, but it's when a lot of like special things happen uh, in the Gloranthan calendar. Um, so you can actually like literally hang this on the wall uh, while you're playing, and you can have a calendar for Glorantha, and it's it's nicely presented too. So back to read me first. What the priests say. So this is, yeah. So this is intended to be cut up, and obviously I would not do that <laughs> nowadays. I would just copy this, um, and you get you know. So here is a wisdom of the woodwife, and this is. Let's see what the back page says here. Uh, maybe not. So the idea here is that here you have the foreman's words. Uh, this is, uh, looks like a dwarven god, and this gives you the perspective of a worshiper of this deity, what the dragon lord says. So the, the worshippers of the dragon lord will believe this stuff. Uh, the moon woman, the lunar priestess, uh, the, this is the goddess of the red moon, of course. Um, uh, including, you know, sometimes other gods of the of the pantheon that are also worshipped, which there's a whole lunar pantheon 
uh, what the wizard says. So this is the a practitioner of sorcery, it, which is a new edition in RuneQuest Third Edition, or was a new edition in RuneQuest Third Edition. It's part of the core now, and it's been part of every edition of RuneQuest since then, except for RuneQuest uh, from Mongoose First Edition, which is a, a bit of a piece of crippleware. They put they brought it back in in supplements, but you had to buy multiple books to get the whole game, which was irritating to basically everybody. Um, the the I have I mean the system is fine in Mongoose RuneQuest 2, but the presentation left a, a lot to be desired. It, it is easily the worst edition of RuneQuest. Um, third edition of uh, RuneQuest I feel is a tremendously underrated product. Actually, the whole product line is underrated. There there are some not great products in there, but a lot of this early stuff when Chaosium was still actively developing it is is really top notch, and this is such a thing. Tales of the Night Hag. So the troll followers might be in here. So these are basically, this is basically handouts. Um, and each four page thing is kind of tied to one, um, or two page thing, I suppose, uh, is tied to one deity and their followers. Uh, then we have the cults book, which is a big thick book. This is really, like, noticeably thick. I don't remember it being this thick, but I'm sure it was. Uh, this is 84 pages. Um, we have a complete list of sections, and boy, there's a lot. Um, well, here's cults, right? So RuneQuest, uh, from the very beginning, had this uh, sort of different way of thinking about fantasy religion. And a lot of that was tied to Glorantha specifically, but it was also deeply rooted in historical precedent, uh, you know, that would be understood by people who have looked into things like Greek mythology and Nor the Norse sagas and stuff like that. Um, and it has since been, you know, it's it's a feature of RuneQuest with roots in Glorantha, but all the non -Rune -Quest, all the non Glorantha versions of RuneQuest, like third edition or like sixth edition, uh, also have uh, cults as a major feature. Um, so this gives you a huge list of cults. For your characters to be members of, and this this creates a uh, major social tie to the world. Here's the world of Glorantha, uh, a quite nice black and white map. Actually, we get uh, what are, what am I being presented with here? These are gods by era, which is interesting. Looks like or at least a discussion of the topic. Uh, major pantheons and arrays of gods, which is pretty cool. So there's multiple pantheons. Universal cult format. Uh, RuneQuest did a little bit to standardize this in 2nd edition, but uh, went farther with it in 3rd edition. Um, and there are like generic cults in the core game, so you could say, okay, I have a sky god, you know, how do I how do I handle that? That's in the core game of RuneQuest 3rd edition, and, and I really frankly miss it in Mithras. I wish we had a book of that material. So, uh, not a ton of illustrations here, but they're decent where they occur, especially for the era. This had been 1985 or so. So, huge, huge list of cults. A lot of which, I'll, as you'll notice here, have special spells that are like specific to the cult. Um, so that's pretty nice. And then we have the Prosopedia, which is basically a list of hundreds and hundreds of different Gloranthan gods. Many of which are in the cult's book, but not all of them are. But you get at least like a paragraph or two on every single one of these. So... Cronisper the Wise, or Cronisper the Wise, is a companion to Yen Morla and the Earth Witch, an advisor to Pamalt. His beard encircles Pamalt's holy mountain, and his staff supports the Sky Dome. He knows the name and secret power of every being on Glorantha, but only shares his wisdom with madmen and gods. Cronisper is rendered in wood as a thin old man with a pointed head, clutching a large staff topped by a spear. His beard descends in a spiral about the staff. Yes, yeah, some of the names and some of the descriptions may tend toward the comical as a as a feature of Glorantha. Um, you know, ludicrous stuff happens in the real world, too. Uh, so, tons and tons of deities in here. Uh, I'll tell you, if you're just, like, designing a fantasy setting and you want, like, a huge list of... Uh, gods you could you could do a lot worse than this uh, to give you ideas but this is certainly a glorantha specific product 
very happy to re-add this to my own RuneQuest and Glorantha collection. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you'd like to hear more fr uh, from me about RuneQuest 3rd Edition, Glorantha, whatever, uh, in the comments. If you'd like to help support the channel, please do consider becoming a patron. There's a link in the video description. Until next time, thanks again for watching, and happy gaming!